Hi, uh, so in today's lecture in part one I will talk about the counterfactual framework and some basic uh, definition of how to define causal effect. So let me describe the notations here at first. So A is the exposure status, Y is the outcome variable and L is a measured variable. Um, often it is um, representing confounder and u is the unmeasured variable. So if we take a very specific example, say for example uh, exposure could be uh, someone who is um, taking the cholesterol medication or say for example rosuvastatin and um, in that case uh, who someone who takes this rosuvastatin would be in the exposure group and someone who does not take this rosuvastatin would be in the non-exposed group and in this example our outcome is total cholesterol level so in this lecture we will define our outcome in two different ways one is the observed outcome and another is the potential outcome so how do we define this observer outcome observer outcome is basically uh, y conditional on a equal to zero would mean that observed outcome when exposed and y given a equal to zero would mean observed outcome when not exposed so we are generally used to this kind of um, notations but the new type of notation is the potential outcome notation is that what would be the outcome the potential outcome when a patient is exposed and what would be the outcome or potential outcome uh, when a patient is not exposed um, and in terms of treatment effect let me define treatment effect in two different ways here one is the treatment effect for an individual and another is the average treatment effect so the treatment effect for an individual is denoted by te and average treatment effect is denoted by ate all right so let me give a very specific example so that we can understand the potent potential outcome framework a bit better understand this that this framework is a conceptual framework and we are not really thinking about observing these outcomes directly let me explain why that is the case say for example we are talking about a person or subject john and this subject is taking rosuvastatin that means he is in the exposed group a equal to one and his potential outcome after a three month period would be 195 milligram per deciliter say for example he started his uh, follow-up in 2020 january and his follow-up ended in 2020 march and at the end of the uh, three month follow-up this would be his potential outcome now think about a scenario where john goes back in time in january 2020 and at that time he makes a different decision about the rosuvastatin so now he is in the not exposed group that means a equal to zero and after three months of follow-up in january 20 sorry in march 2020 um, his potential outcome would be 245 milligram per deciliter so the treatment effect for this person would be um, this minus this that means uh, 195 minus 245 equal to minus 50 that would be this person's treatment effect right understand this this is a conceptual framework we are not necessarily measuring anything that is why we are representing this outcome in the potential outcome notation understand this that it would be not possible um, for us to observe the outcomes uh, for the same person under two different conditions this is only possible 
because we are we are operating under a hypothetical framework or the potential outcome framework that is why we can estimate this treatment effect equal to minus 50. all right let us expand this example into five subjects so now we have john jim jake cody and luke and we um, first give them the treatment and then follow them up for three months and we observe all of these outcomes these are the cholesterol levels right and then we go back in time for with all of this person and now we make a different decision um, and we do not give them resuvastatin and after three months of follow-up their outcome is uh, are, are these ones so since under this potential outcome or conceptual framework we do observe both of these outcomes um, so we can calculate the treatment effects for all of these persons and we can easily calculate the estimated um, average treatment effect as well just by averaging them all but the real world problem is when we are under the real world we can only observe one potential outcome um, not both so under a real world scenario what would happen is that if we observe john's outcome under exposure we would not see his outcome under unexposed condition right so same is true for all of the other patients here we would observe only one either in the exposed group or in the unexposed group we would observe their conditions and if we are observing only one condition we cannot we cannot see or estimate the treatment individual treatment effect we can also not estimate the average treatment effect directly um, so obviously this is the real world problem that we cannot measure um, the outcome for the same subject under two different conditions so consider this scenario even if we cannot observe both conditions is it possible that we simply average this and we simply average this and then um, we can still get the average treatment effect let's just do that um, when we do averaging of these two and averaging of these three and then we subtract we get minus 45 which is not equals to minus 58 that we have observed in our previous slide when we we have we observe both of these uh, measurements under two different conditions right so obviously something is going wrong all right so the basic idea is this technique would only work this conditioning technique would only work if we were randomly assigning uh, subjects in both of these groups that is number one condition and another condition is obviously we needed to have sufficient sample size so two sample size is not enough three sample size is obviously not enough so if we were assigning um the subjects um the treatment at random then we would uh, be able to recover the true average treatment effect in general and that is why because when we are doing randomization then we are basically making sure that two treatment groups rosovastatin group and no no rosovastatin group are comparable we also call them exchangeable ignorable treatment assignment and all of these are happening because of randomization but when we do not have um, any randomization then we cannot make sure that these subjects are comparable so that is one of the uh, feature of randomization that there are no systematic difference in the groups uh, by the process of randomization the systematic difference would be eliminated so what is happening in our case when we do not have any randomization when we are dealing with observational data set and we are still 
dealing with this conditional measurements under treatment and conditional measurement under no treatment. So this uh, formula that you are seeing here, this includes two different components. The first component is the obviously treatment effect, but it will also include some systematic difference in two groups. In general, we call them confounding. So let me just give you one example of how this could happen. Say in a hospital, a doctor was prescribing the rosuvastatin treatment only to the people who are really old. So if there was a patient who was young and went to the doc doctor, the doctor would not prescribe the uh, patient this rosuvastatin drug. He would only prescribe this rosuvastatin drug to the older patient or the frail, uh, frail patient. Uh, so in order to get valid causal inference, we need to somehow address this second component and we need to somehow eliminate this systematic difference in these two groups or we need to adjust this confounding somehow. So say for example in our hypothetical example where age is a known confounder and we know from our subject area knowledge that um, the doctor is prescribing uh, depending on the age so age is the differentiating factor whether a person gets a treatment or not so in that case in order to get a causal effect um, what we would need to do is we would need to stratify the group say for example this is one solution into the younger group versus the older group and then if we are trying to get this um, total cholesterol level in the treated group group when that person belongs to the younger age and uh, total cholesterol level in the untreated group when the person belongs to the younger age um, then we would get a treatment effect uh, or the causal effect for the young similarly we can calculate the causal effect for the old people so this formulation that you are seeing that we are stratifying based on age uh, we are in one group we have younger younger age uh, patients and in another group we have older age patient um, and the the process is known as exchangeability that means it will only work if uh, we are conditioning on l or the age variable um, but to be able to condition on this age variable, we not only need to have a, um, the measurement of Y, measurement of A, we also need a measurement of L. So the age needs to be measured for us to be able to do this kind of stratification.